Encryption is necessary for more or less everything that you use the web for today. And the same way, encryption is going to be necessary for more or less everything that you use a blockchain for in 10 years. Zuko Wilcox is a technologist and cryptographer from Boulder, Colorado. He's a member of the cypherpunk movement and is the CEO of Zcash, a privacy token project. We sat down with Zuko to discuss his journey in cryptography and how cryptocurrencies can protect human privacy. You went to school at CEO, but there were some things that went on before then that kind of started to get you more engaged with this whole cryptography movement. So the internet back then was exciting, but it didn't have the World Wide Web. It hadn't been invented yet. But you could discover things on FTP sites and mailing lists and Usenet. So I discovered the Cypherpunk's mailing list. Um, and at some point, I got a copy of Bruce Schneier's book, Applied Cryptography, where it turns out you can do a hundred interesting things with cryptography instead of just encrypting and decrypting a secret message. Why was it important that it was something that people were wanting to engage with? Like, what could it solve? You know, before the internet, you couldn't talk to someone from another country, practically speaking. It would be ex exceedingly expensive or inconvenient or it would be literally censored, like they would open your paper letter and read it to make sure that what you were saying to the person in the other country was okay with them. And the internet completely and permanently changed that. Cryptography was just a necessary component of the internet. And it just seemed like the internet is either going to fail or it's going to get strong cryptography weaved into it and continue being an internet. The latter is what happened. The US government attempted to suppress the development of cryptography, failed, the cryptography got integrated into the internet, so the US government now requires by law that you use that kind of cryptography to protect your customers if you're using the internet, which I think is an interesting and underappreciated reversal. But at the same time, I was already on to the next thing, which I discovered cryptocurrency. I heard about David Chom's research and downloaded papers he had written from an FTP site and printed them out on my school's laser printer, skipped class uh, to read those papers. It was 1993 when I fell down the rabbit hole and stopped going to class. Can you tell us about the love note? <laughs> so uh, the story of the love note is very soon after the launch, the original launch of the Zcash blockchain, um, a young woman of my acquaintance told me she had received a very small payment of Zcash along with an accompanying message. The message was a link to a, an image, and the image was a scan of tickets to an event that she and her boyfriend had been talking about going to overseas. So it was an encrypted love note built into the blockchain forever now. When she told you that, how did that make you feel? It was so great to see that this thing we'd built is already being used by people for what matters to them, for part of their humanity. Why is privacy so important? Privacy is, in my mind, it's a human right. It's necessary to be human. You can't be yourself when you're under the eye of others, especially powerful others. You can't make moral choices. You can't have human intimacy. You can't really think your own thoughts. We are currently, as a human race, performing a very radical and very dangerous experiment of eliminating privacy wholesale from entire societies, entire nations, entire populations. We shouldn't gamble our nation and our communities and our families on that dangerous experiment. 